I've been working on creating a high-speed platformer for a little over two weeks now, and I've learned a lot so far. Though the game is shaping up really well, it became apparent to me that it was lacking a critical feature. Death. Being able to zip through a level at high speeds is fun, but often, it's not until some sort of consequence is involved that it begins to feel truly exhilarating. Imagine playing Celeste with no bottomless pits, no spikes, and none of the goop that you find in the resort. It would still feel great to control, but without the thrill of avoiding deadly obstacles and the satisfaction of clearing a level you died to dozens of times, it wouldn't be quite the same. So how did we get there? The first thing I had to learn was how to detect collision with objects of a certain group. That way, I could check if the player was colliding with a hazard, and if so, declare the player to be dead. If my dead variable is set to true, most physics processes will stop immediately, like handling player input and acceleration, and a death animation will play. One problem I ran into was the character sliding on the ground after a death because friction was no longer taking place. So a quick fix to that was setting the character's x and y velocities to zero upon death. I also had to set the character's animation scale to the default so it would override any squash and stretch taking place, which doesn't look great on the death animation. Then I connected a signal from my animated sprite 2D to check whether the death animation has just finished. If so, the function respawn player is performed. I used a very helpful script, which I'll link in the description, to locate the nearest respawn point. Basically, I have a bunch of nodes that are part of a respawn point group, and the script checks which is closest and teleports you there. The script worked immediately, which, as I've come to find out, can be rare, and I was really happy with the result. Besides teleporting you to the nearest respawn point, the script also plays the respawn animation, which is actually just the death animation in reverse. Even though it was a really simple solution, I'm loving how cool it looks. And then, once the respawn animation completes, a signal is sent to the player, and they are declared to be no longer dead, which means you regain control. One of the last tweaks I made was a suggestion from Lemon Drop, who you might remember from the previous video. When you die, the music cuts out abruptly to emphasize the death sound, then fades back in after you respawn. This gives a little more impact to the death animation and makes it feel consequential. Finally, in my previous video, a couple people suggested adding a visual indicator of how many wall jumps you had left, but as I was working on it, it sparked a completely different idea. What if we could use the same concept to add some personality to the character? So lo and behold, if you die, the player says ow. I know it's a small thing, but I really love this idea, and I think I may use a similar system to display hints and dialogue at certain points throughout the game, or even to help tell the character's story. So here's the culmination of all this work. It's not perfect, but I think it's a great start. I'll definitely be swapping out the death and respawn sounds with something different, as they're a bit melodramatic and got to be somewhat obnoxious over time. I think I'll also need to delay the death animation if you hit right at the edge of some spikes, because it just doesn't look good. Also, if you fall below the map, it looks like you just got killed by the void, but it's also kind of sick, I guess? Either way, implementing a death and respawn mechanic turned out to be much easier than I was expecting, and that will allow me to continue adding additional features and finally begin designing some more levels. Speaking of additional features, here's a brief rundown of the other things I've added since we last checked in. As suggested, the character now has a wall jump counter that appears when you're wall jumping. Don't worry, I'm going to replace the number with a sprite at some point, and my prevailing idea is just to use a few white dots to represent your remaining wall jumps. This is also going to be something that can be enabled or disabled in the settings. I took my first stab at a main menu, and while it looks extremely rough, you can select whether you want to play the first or second dungeon level from here, and it works. Completing the level now shows you your final time and a death counter, instead of just congratulating you. By the way, if you didn't notice from my rudimentary title screen, the game officially has a name. I decided to go with Pixel Parkour. I think it's concise, cute, and captures the feel of the game pretty well. If you hadn't guessed, I love parkour, both in video games and in real life, and blasting through levels in this game gives the same type of vibe as jumping across rooftops and doing flips. It's all about freedom of movement. Also. I have created a Steam page for the game, so you guys can wishlist it if you're interested, but it's still under review as I'm writing this. 
I'll be posting the link in the description as soon as it's live so you all can check it out. Now with all that said, what's on the horizon? Well, I'll let you take a sneak peek at the forthcoming features. I'm working on a save system that will store the best time for each level and display it below your level timer, so you have an incentive to race against yourself and achieve a new personal best. I'll be soon adding destructible barriers and other objects that you can use your sword to interact with. I'll be completing the first dungeon zone with three or more complete stages, then creating a new zone with totally different theming. I'll be solidifying the character's name and backstory, and beginning to map out the story progression as well. There's definitely more on the menu long term, but I figured I would share what some of the next priorities will be as I continue developing Pixel Parkour. If you'd like to keep track of my progress, feel free to subscribe and wishlist the game once the page is live. You can also join the Discord if you'd like to see small updates before anyone else, and I may privately release demos there for playtesting. Before I go today, I need to say how grateful I am for the incredible response and support on this game so far. It's wild that all this has taken shape in just a few weeks, and I never expected that these devlogs would get as much attention as they have. I'm truly grateful for everyone who's watching, and for those who take the time to share their thoughts or support in the comments. It really means a lot. With that said, I've got a lot of work ahead of me, so I'll go ahead and sign off for now. I'll see you all in the next video.